Hello and welcome to Live Lunch with Pastor. This is Pastor Tony Gandula joining you today on the first day officially of autumn or fall. At least that's what my calendar says. Um, and I'm so glad to have made it here. So thank you for being with us also today. Uh, we have these live lunches every day at 1210. You're free to always check them out or you can go ahead and share them afterwards or see them later. Hey, Joyce, God bless you. Chris, God bless you. Um, good morning, or I guess right now we're in the afternoon realm. So today's live lunch is gonna be another drama, and I'm gonna do my best to boot, do the dramatic part, but you can always check out our past live lunches on this Facebook and, of course, on our website at mfhlb.com. Anytime you want to give to the work of the Lord, feel free, hit the Shop Now button, and it'll take you to our don Donate Now on the uh, website. And also, we got these on YouTube. They're really dressed up on YouTube, so if you ever check out My Father's House, Las Vegas on YouTube, Fritz has done an awesome job of dressing them up, putting captions in there, and uh, uh, hashtags, and all these cool things that um, he knows how to do so well. So, to today's live lunch. You say, I have no purpose. God says, Behold my servant. All of us go through this and may go through this for a long time in our lives and may go through it several times. We feel like, who am I and why am I here? Um, somebody else named me. I love to say this because it's just an awesome thing to me that somebody else named me <laughs> and I didn't, yeah, I just showed up at this time because there's a purpose for me. And we, of course, will struggle with it our whole lives trying to find our identity. And our whole world is struggling majorly with identity crisis. But here we go with what God says compared to what we or the whole world says. I have no purpose. What we say at times. Who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? But God says, behold my servant. Now that comes from Matthew 12, 18. It's in the New Testament, and it's a quote from the Old Testament. Hi, Alex, Hazel. So in the New Testament, so I think that's kind of cool. The new is quoting the old. It's funny how we can find out who we are by listening to what God said a long time ago about us. This is about Christ. Behold my servant whom I have chosen. Now let's stop right there. God has a purpose for us already and that is to be his servant. I just wanted to Get that to you right now. We discover who we are when we give ourselves away. It's in the Bible. It's a lot of what Jesus said that if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find your life. He who loses his or she who loses his life for my sake will find their lives. But let's get back to the word of God in this verse. Behold, my servant. That's what God wants to say and his desire for us is. To know his will. See, if we're doing somebody else's will, we're serving them. And if we're lost and we feel like, what is my purpose? Who am I? Why am I here? We don't know the will that we were purposed for. And to find that, it's to find God's purpose for us in serving him. In other words, I'm going to surrender my will. I'm going to surrender what I want to be or become and trust that precious gift to God. And the revelation of who God says he is through his son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and God's servants, people who are an example to us 
of walking with the Lord. You know, the Bible says to mark those who walk with God as an example. So God has given us a lot of awesome examples. But the bottom line is, being a servant, let's explore this a little bit more. Behold my servant. It's a quote from Isaiah 42.1 mentioned again in Matthew 12.18, and it's speaking of Jesus. Whom I have chosen. So this is who I prefer. Not only my servant, but I prefer. He's mine. I prefer him. It's an endearing term. My beloved, so there is the endearment right there. My beloved, check this out. In whom my soul or my will. As our soul represents our will. You can substitute the word will for soul in the Bible. In whom my soul is well pleased. They're here to do my will. Now think about that. If you're doing the will of God, the door opens. Sometimes we come in, we want that door to open. The Bible even says, knock, seek, ask, and it will open. So it, God encourages to do so. But if you come in knowing you're here on God's business, that door has to open. Even a door that has always remained shut has to open because you're not here doing your own will, your own soul's desires. And when we do somebody else's will, and I'm talking about that somebody else being the Lord, there's other things we can get into, but the doors open up. The Bible says even the gates of hell will not prevail against my church, Jesus said, because they're here to do his will. So that's an awesome thing. My beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. My will is well pleased. There's more to this and I want to, uh, to go into it, but I'm just gonna continue with um, the verse. I gotta say it. God's will is his word. When God's word is spoken, that's his will. God's word is his son, Jesus. He is God's son, but he came, he said, lo, I come to do your will, O God. In the volume of the book that you wrote of me, I've come to do your will, O God. Let's look at somebody else who came to do, and God called his servant. This is Numbers 12, 7. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. And that verse actually was God saying, if there's a prophet among you, I'll speak to them in a dream. But not so with my servant Moses, because he has shown himself to be faithful in all of my house, in my building, in my will, what I want to be done with my people, Moses has showed himself to be faithful. And it's important that a servant shows themselves to be faithful. They're gonna let their master promote them. They're gonna let their, the one they're serving take them to the next level. Now, the crazy thing about all this is sometimes we act like this doesn't relate. Servants, masters, whatnot. We act like that was back then and that does nothing to do with today. But it's got everything to do with the day because Jesus said it and said, if you lose your life, for my sake, you'll find your life. And why would anybody give you your own if you can't be trusted in that that belongs to another? I'm not quoting it perfectly, but for us to have our own, Jesus is saying we have to be trusted in that which is not ours. We're serving somebody else. So before we get into us serving somebody else, first you need to serve the Lord and say he is your master and you'll know his will, and then God will direct you to serve someone, maybe to serve in a ministry, maybe to serve in his house, in a position to be faithful in. You'll have people who are leaders to be faithful to, being trusted in that which belongs to somebody else. And you know what you'll have? Purpose. You'll, you won't have that, I have no purpose you'll know you're there to serve 
and you're doing God's will, and then you'll see God begin to add to you and give you your own, just like Jesus said. How can you be entrusted with your own when you're not faithful in that which belongs to someone else? This involves a job. This involves um, dealing with your family members, like your parents, or people who have become like parents in your life or, or leaders in your life. We want our own, but God wants to say, behold, my servant. They're here to do my will. How do we find purpose? We're really looking for what our will is supposed to be doing, who we're supposed to be serving. First the Lord, but then God calls us to serve others, just like he did. The last verse, Luke twenty two twenty seven. For what is greater, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. Are you a disciple? He that sits at meat or he that serves? It is, not, is it not he that sits at meat? They're greater than the one that serves. And then he sums it up saying, but I am among you as one that serves. Giving us an example. Here to do his father's will. Knowing his purpose. We'll talk about this more, uh, maybe not tomorrow, but maybe coming up and maybe tomorrow. But we'll talk about this more, especially when it comes to identity. And that's what the world really struggles with right now. So you have a purpose. When you say, I have no purpose, God says to us, behold my servant. Is it you? It can be you. If you don't know Jesus, it's simple. You... You basically say out of your heart and soul, Jesus, thank you for giving your life for me. Your will was given for me. You were following your Father's will. I receive it. Now I give you my heart and my will. Make me like you. Make me a servant like you, ready to do his master's bidding or the Father's bidding in Jesus' name, and the doors have to open. God bless you. Thank you for checking us out today on Live Lunch. If this is ministered to you, please share it, and thank you for um, being God's servants to hear his word. We blow our kiss to the Lord. Amen? God bless you.